Welcome to this very special show on USA Today. My name is Zuleika Nathu, and I'm honored to reveal USA Today's 2023 Women of the Year. USA Today's Women of the Year is a 12-month search to recognize outstanding women. They are leaders, innovators, and champions. Some are well-known, others are making waves more quietly, but all of them have achieved exceptional success and uplifted others along the way, often while facing their own hurdles. Today, you'll get to hear from the women chosen for this prestigious honor. Each one has an inspiring story. We begin with one of the most extraordinary first ladies of our time, Michelle Obama. Our motto is, when they go low, we go high. With that signature line, Michelle Obama sparked a memorable slogan for the campaign trail and a mantra for life on and off the stage. In accepting USA Today's Women of the Year honor, Michelle Obama said in a written response that going high was a conscious decision when critics were loudest. It's not always easy to go high, of course, but unlike making the choice to take the low road, going high will never, ever diminish who you are. As America's first black first lady, the Harvard and Princeton educated attorney refused to let others dictate who she should be a quality she says was instilled by her parents. My mother knew how to parent in a phenomenal way, you know, to sort of give us our space and she appreciated who each of us were in our own individual right. It's a foundation that's still paving the way for me today, even as I've been without my father for more than three decades now, she said. We lost him far too soon after a long battle with multiple sclerosis, but the lessons he taught me are still with me every day. As First Lady, she pushed for women's rights, equality, and higher education. The ability to read, write, and analyze, the confidence to stand up and demand justice and equality, the qualifications and connections to get your foot in that door and take your seat at the table. All of that starts with education. She championed healthy living and eating. And as you can see, it is thriving. She became a pop culture and style icon. And defined couple goals with husband Barack. I'm so grateful to have a partner who listens to me when I'm down, reasons with me, and does everything he can to lift me up. <laughs> Most of all, she strived to maintain normalcy for her daughters. Sasha and Malia came of age in the White House and the spotlight. It's tough to raise children or feel normal in such unusual circumstances, and we made it through. I'm proud of that. Leaving Washington wasn't the end of her public service or public life. Michelle was just getting started. Her debut memoir, Becoming, was the top-selling book in the U.S. in 2018. She followed it up in 2022 with a book of advice and insights, The Light We Carry. The former Flotus, an author, influencer, mentor, and advocate, says her journey from the south side of Chicago to global prominence <laughs> reminds her she can't control what others think of her, but she can make the most of her platform by, quote, focusing on things that are authentic and real to me. Mostly, I'm just trying to share my story, and by doing so, I hope I've helped some people see the value in their own stories and share theirs as well. I want our young people to know that they matter, that they belong. So don't be afraid. You hear me? Young people, don't be afraid. Be focused. <laughs> be determined. Be hopeful. Be empowered. And know that I will be with you, rooting for you and working to support you for the rest of my life. Education, gratitude, family, grit. These are some of the threads that you'll notice in the background of the stories our guests are sharing with you. They create an intricate and recurring pattern, a learned wisdom that many of life's challenges are surmountable with enough determination. Our next honoree is a cookbook author who became an advocate for New York City's Chinatown during the pandemic. Grace Young found her voice and a new passion during one of the world's most trying times. 
Hi, Mrs. Lee. I need to buy a walk. Ah, perfect. Grace Young is known as the stir fry guru, but has also been called the accidental voice of Chinatowns across the country. Mm. From a young age, the cookbook author and culinary historian was influenced by her parents, teachers, and Julia Child. My mom was an immigrant. Both of my parents were very quiet, soft-spoken people. And so to see this woman who was so exuberant and who was so unafraid of failing. During the pandemic, Young helped shed light on struggling businesses. I think during COVID, seeing the people in Chinatown show so much grit and dignity and determination in the face of what they were dealing with taught me what courage is. I saw a whole new level of appreciation for the people that make up Chinatown. They showed up every day, seven days a week, 10, 12, 14 hours a day working, and there were no customers. In 2020, Chinatown was shunned because of misinformation and xenophobia, um, but everybody still showed up. Young and her team documented stories of the community, from family and cuisine to resiliency in the face of COVID and anti-Asian discrimination. Every little bit that we do matters. In 2020, I went to visit one of the businesses in Chinatown, this little mom and pop store called KK Discount. And Mr. Lee is the owner. And he told me then that he had lost 50% of his business. And he also had restaurant clients. You know, Chinatown was basically shut down. At that point, I think it was like you could have 25% indoor capacity, which was nothing. He had lost 90% of his restaurant business. He says that he had two new customers that day. And that gave him hope. Two new customers. And he's feeling hopeful. And that made me realize that nothing is too small, that if I can just do an Instagram post and two people notice it and show up to KK Discount, that that gives him hope. And hope is really important. Young was named the 2022 Humanitarian of the Year from the James Beard Foundation. The same year, she also received another notable honor, the Julia Child Award. Named after Young's inspiration, it's given to someone who's made a profound difference in the way America cooks and eats. Chinatowns, they represent the American dream. So many immigrants have been able to get a foothold in this country, and it's empowered so many immigrants to actually, through backbreaking work and sacrifice, to pursue the American dream. And so, there's no other place in America that actually shows us the immigrant story. In New York's Chinatown, 98% of the businesses are mom and pop. In San Francisco's Chinatown, there are a thousand family-owned businesses. Mm. It's just a little bit of heaven. In Chinatown, it's a reminder of what it means to have human connections and that enriches our lives immeasurably. Up next is an Academy Award-winning actor you might know from films such as The First Wives Club and Overboard. Goldie Hawn is also a producer and a passionate advocate for children's mental health. She's the founder of Mind Up for Life. USA Today's editor-in-chief, Nicole Carroll, sat down with our next Woman of the Year honoree, Goldie Hawn. I'm thrilled you're here because I want to talk about Mind Up for Life and the importance of this in kids' lives. You've been on this a long time. I know. Very recently, we've all become more aware of, of mental health issues, especially among young people. What got you started down this path? Well, first of all, children have always been, so I've been gravi I gravitate toward children, right? And I think there's a part of me that feels a little identifying with them um, because they have a sense of joy. So I created this this program for children that was based on happiness, basically. And what I wanted for them was to have some understanding of their brain. Because ultimately, every time I looked at more research about happiness, it all happens here. There's so many emotions we don't know that our children are facing today, and we're trying to figure it out. 20 years ago, mental health was on the rise. 
So it wasn't just COVID. It's the fact that we're looking at mental illness as something older people have. Our children have it too. They, they react to everything there is. Just because their brain isn't as developed as ours, that's why it's so important that we start a developing brain with the right input, the right activities, the right practice to build a stronger, more fit brain. So when you think yeah. about the chapters in your life, you know, what led you to this becoming your primary focus and what advice do you have for other women who are looking at different chapters in their life? So, first of all, what we're doing here with Mind Up and the Children is actually ad adaptable to, to adults, to, to everyone, every age, right? But when you have, you know, your work, for instance, you can go through stages of your life, right? However, what happens is, is that we forget to savor time, to savor moments of joy. There's a lot of issues to be dealt with, but we can never forget about us and nurturing us. You, do you have a guiding principle that you live by? I can't live without truth. My mother used to say, I can't handle a lie, and truth is far better. She's right, but truth in many ways. Truth and, uh, to being true to myself. Truth and who you are in a relationship. To be able to declare who you are and what you want and what you don't want. What are some specific ways you get involved in advancing equality and what, what can others do as well? I think what women have to worry about more is their health, their ability to actually survive through all of the stressors that come about. And if you have children, to be able to know that they're getting everything they need because we're a big part of that, then we have to be the arbiter of our own life. So last question. Yes. So you've done so much in your life. Looking back, what advice would you give a younger version of yourself? What advice would you give her knowing everything you know now? If you're sad, tell someone. If you're hurting, tell someone. If you're scared, share that. Don't live inside your secrets by yourself. It's okay to not feel well. It's okay to be scared. It's okay. All these emotions are normal. I mean, we are emotional beings, period. And when you understand and recognize your emotion and you share it with someone, oftentimes it can actually dissipate a little bit and be able to be true to yourself that way. Share moments of sadness and savor moments of joy. Sage words from a woman who has survived and thrived in a challenging industry. Up next, one of the most unique, and shall we say, gravity-defying interviews in Women of the Year history. You don't want to miss it. The conversation with our next recipient transcends space and time. That's because astronaut Nicole Mann is aboard the International Space Station, about 220 miles from Earth. Marine Colonel Nicole Mann understands the importance of her role in space exploration. To be a part of the effort of really all of humanity to explore to space. Sometimes it makes you feel so small, then when you have a moment to look out on the cupola and see the in world beneath you 250 miles below, it just fills you with so much amazement. Mann has worked tirelessly to reach this moment. How are we doing? Okay. She holds a Bachelor of Science and a Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering. She's a colonel in the U.S. Marine Corps and served as a test pilot in the F.A. 18 Hornet and Super Hornet. And she's the first Indigenous woman to go to space. It's incredible to be in space. Mom, look, I'm finally in space. Now commander of NASA's SpaceX Crew-5 mission, Mann knows her work has just begun. I worked so hard to become a Marine, to become a fighter pilot, to become an engineer and an astronaut. Not to be a female Marine, or not to be a Native American engineer. But as I grew older and kind of opened up my perspective from just my, my personal self, I realized how important it is that we uh, recognize diversity and how important it is that we reach out to the younger generation. High and above her long list of accomplishments, her proudest moment is on Earth. My proudest moment, I think, is, is a mom just prior to launch. I, I have a 10-year-old son, and right before launch, and he came to me and he said, Mom, you know, I'm really going to miss you when you're gone, 
but I want you to know that I understand what you're doing is really important for the exploration of space and for all humans on earth. And he told me, he goes, mom, I want you to know it's okay. And I'm really proud of you. And that, I mean, that totally made me cry. From flying fighter jets to spacewalks outside the International Space Station, Mann has found courage ahead of her biggest accomplishments. The way that I define courage is really not being afraid to fail. So it doesn't mean not being scared or not being afraid, but it means taking those calculated risks when necessary. It means applying to be an astronaut and maybe you'll struggle and maybe you'll stumble and maybe you'll have setbacks along the way, but not letting that fear hold you back. And NASA astronaut Nicole Mann is egressing or exiting the airlock. I had an opportunity to do two spacewalks while I've been here on board the space station. And there was this one moment when I was hanging out on the, the literally the very end of the space station, uh, routing some cables. And I looked down just as the sun was coming around planet Earth. And it was just such an incredible, uh, beautiful moment to see all humans um, really that are that are alive now uh, beneath on this beautiful planet and it made me excited about the future exploration with the Artemis mission to the moon and eventually our mission to Mars I think we're seeing hopefully the uh, collaboration of all of humankind in order to accomplish these lofty goals and to me that gives me a lot of hope and inspiration and as for the future we told her we hope to see her soon well, maybe when I get back to uh, planet Earth, uh, we can do an interview in person, but I won't be in microgravity, so you won't get to see me do any flips or anything cool. Nicole Mann was one of two astronauts to complete the first space station spacewalk of 2023. Actress and singer Cheryl Lee Ralph has taken center stage over the last year in more ways than one. She took home an Emmy for her role on the comedy series Abbott Elementary, and behind the scenes, the star is working with her children to fight for racial equality through the arts, health, and wellness. Cheryl Lee Ralph is our next Woman of the Year. Cheryl Lee, can you look right here for me, please? Thank you. There's something very, very special happening to me right now that I can't even describe it. All I can do is lean into it. These are all of my dreams come true. From a Tony nomination to portraying ABC's favorite teacher, to singing at the Super Bowl, to being a mother of two, Cheryl Lee Ralph's list of accomplishments is nothing short of spectacular. Oh, yeah, right there, beautiful. Yeah. I don't know what to do with all of it. All I can do is just keep being me. Cheryl Lee started her career in film at age 19. Then she became the first to play Dina Jones in Dreamgirls on Broadway. Creating the role of Dina Jones in Dreamgirls was not just a gift to me, but it was a gift to a whole lot of little girls, little black girls who came to the theater, looked up on the stage, and saw a beautiful big girl image of themselves. Since then, she's blessed the world screens with many roles, including on the hit sitcom Abbott Elementary. I get a call from Quinta Brunson. Miss Ralph, they're sleeping on your talent, but I am not. Would you take this journey with me? In 2022, Cheryl Lee became the second black woman to win an Emmy Award for Best Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series. She also won a Critics' Choice Award and a SAG Award for Best Ensemble. There have been moments where I thought, well, you know, if I quit now, I have had a great career. But I didn't quit. I kept moving on, I kept believing. Through her career, Cheryl Lee's parents championed her. Today, her children inspire her. I'm an immigrant's child. My mother from Jamaica. And my mother never wanted me to lose my roots in Jamaica. Why was that important? Because in Jamaica, with so many people of African descent, I was able to see greatness. So for me, there were all of those people to look up to. Cheryl Lee has always used her platform to help others. Her foundation helps raise awareness for HIV and AIDS. I don't think I'd be anything if I were not an activist. I don't think I would be anything if I were not using my voice to help right wrongs the way that I could. So I created the Diva Foundation, divinely inspired, victoriously aware. 
and I created Diva Simply Singing. Called all the divas I knew, from Debbie Allen to Diane Reeves, Mary Wilson, everybody in between. I said, I need your help. Let us just raise our voices in song and commitment to fight this fight for those that we have lost. 33 years later, we're still doing it. Through her activism, performing, being a mother, and role model, Shirley Ralph never forgets who she is. You did it for me then, you do it for me now. I look at the woman in the mirror, and I look at her every day. I empower her, I love her, I respect her. I try and give her the best. And when I'm able to do all of those things for her, I'm more able to do it for everybody else. Ralph recently made history as the first person to perform Lift Every Voice and Sing at the Super Bowl pregame show inside the stadium. The hymn is often called the Black National Anthem and served as a rallying cry for the civil rights movement. In addition to the five women we've recognized already, USA Today honored these powerful women as well. Take a look. I learned about the importance of public history and its ability to impact communities and inspire new generations. I represent my people and I represent a community that is so underrepresented. I wanna make sure that I show up. Representation matters because when young people see a deaf woman leading Gallaudet University, especially if it's a young deaf child, they look to something and realize it's also possible for them. It's fine to be the first, but I didn't want to be the last. You will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you are about to enter. So help you, God. Congratulations. And now's the time to remind people of who we are. Envision a superhero. That is us. <laughs> that is who we are. Remarkable women are promoting positive and purposeful change in their communities every single day. They might not have the same platform as someone like Goldie Hawn or Michelle Obama, but they're lifting others up in meaningful ways. That deserves to be recognized, which is exactly what we do in our series, Womankind. The women in this series are entrepreneurs, mentors, volunteers, small business owners, teachers, sometimes all at the same time. They are changing the world one act, one relationship, one meaningful pursuit at a time. And it can happen at any age. Right now, let's introduce you to an all-girls team of robotic experts taking the male-dominated tech community by storm. They call themselves the Nerdettes. Here's USA Today's Allison Moses. This all-girls robotics team is designing and building robots, taking the competition world by storm, and inspiring other young women to do the same. And they do it all with style. Our goal for the Nerdettes is to expose like our community and other communities to robotics in general and first. And we want people to see that it can be fun, and we want girls to see that it can be fun. And we want them to branch out into the STEM field and see how first is a stepping block into that career. The team, cleverly named the Nerdettes, formed when Emily joined a robotics team. Turns out it was almost all boys. So I get there and I'm like, I'm seeing what they're doing and it's actually really interesting and I, I'm liking it. But the boys want me and the other girl to make posters instead of doing robotics. And you know, that's not really what I was there for. I wanted to build a robot if I was going to be there. So we came up with an all girls robotics team so that all the girls could be doing all the work instead of the boys. Emily saw a need for a more supportive environment for women in robotics. And so, the Nerdettes formed. Women don't judge you for being women. They're not gonna look yeah. at you and be like, you can't do this because you're a girl. No, we all know that we're capable and we all know that we can do these things. They even started training a younger group of girls to help prep them for the Nerdettes called the Gear Girls. It's also really fun that we get to go out and do a lot of outreach with our community. The Nerdettes have had many successes in their years together, including making it to Worlds. These are the best robotic competitions from around the world, but they stayed strong. They, they knew what they could do. They knew their limitations and they just had a stinking ball at that competition. Being an all women's team in a predominantly male dominated field, they always come prepared to show exactly how talented they are every chance they get. 
I don't see that they're looked down upon, but between their positive outgoing bubbly attitudes and their, you know, bright pink shirts and leggings and skirts that they wear and their uniforms, they definitely get noticed. They have inspired other girls and all girl teams. In competitions, people don't take us seriously sometimes. You don't have to like it, but I'm going to be in there and I'm going to be playing. <laughs> the Nerdads proved to be something special, unlike any other robotics team any of them had experienced before. Our team is like a really close group mm -hmm. of friends now, and I don't think you can find a team that's like better friends than we are. It has been an amazing transformation to see how confident they have grown in their public speaking skills and being able to talk about what they do and what their robot's able to do. As some of them prepare to graduate, they want the Nerdette's legacy to continue on. To get other people into robotics and to see what we do in robotics, and we want other people to get into it because we feel like first it's just shrinking so much right now, and we want to build it back up and so that more people get into robotics. And so we want people to see the Nerdettes and be like, oh wow, they created two new teams this year, and they're like getting little girls into robotics, and that's how we want to be seen. Meet all of the incredible people featured in this series on usatoday.com forward slash womankind. Every year we honor women who are advocates for equity, inspire change, and give others a place to see themselves. If you'd like to nominate a woman for this annual project, go to womenoftheyear.usatoday.com. From the USA Today studio in Manhattan, I'm Zuleika Nethu. Thanks for watching.